Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us, now that we have got a brief introduction on enzymes, let us quickly look at some of the important characteristics of enzymes. They are proteinaceous because as I said, most of the enzymes are protein in nature. They can be simple protein enzymes which is purely made up of proteins or they can be conjugate protein enzymes that is hollow enzymes. They have a protein group and a non-protein group which can be a cofactor or a coenzyme. If you talk about their structure, they have a three-dimensional structure because since enzymes are mostly proteins, so their structure are going to be similar to proteins and proteins have a three-dimensional structure to be biologically function. They have substrate binding sites which are present. Now these are the active sites which I was talking about while I was discussing proteins, the tertiary structure of proteins. I told you that there is something called active sites. So now the enzymes always act on the reactants in a chemical reaction that is the substrate. So the substrate bind, has to bind with the enzyme because the enzyme and the substrate will go, is going to work together. So in order to work together, they bind, they want to bind with each other. So in the enzyme, there is a site where the in substrates can bind themselves. So those sites, those regions are known as active sites or substrate binding sites. So that is about the structure of enzymes. So that is the speciality of the structure of enzymes that they have these active sites or substrate binding sites where they can combine with the substrate. If you talk about their solubility, they are mostly water soluble. However, some of them are water insoluble as well, but most of them are soluble in water. Catalytic behavior, obviously that is the most important characteristic of enzymes that they act as catalysts. So they increase the rate of a reaction. Now, how do they do that? That we are going to look at, at the next in the next few slides. They remain unaltered during the course of reaction. Now, their job is to increase the rate of reaction, but they themselves will not get changed in any way. So they will themselves remain the same. They will just increase the rate of the reaction. So now let us look at the naming of enzymes. How are enzymes named? So that is also an important topic to be covered. So when you talk about their names, they are named after compounds or class on which they act. When I say compounds or class, uh, I'm talking about the reactants. So the type of reactants on which they act, they are also named accordingly. Let us take some examples. Let us take the example of um, a conversion of a disaccharide maltose the process of hydrolysis happens and it gets converted into two units of glucose right we are aware of this reaction so this happens by hydrolysis but in order to increase the rate of this reaction and enzymes play an important role here so can you guess what is the name of the enzyme as i said the enzyme will be named after the compound on which it acts so this is the compound on which it is acting. This is the substrate. So the name of the enzyme is maltase. So it is named after maltose. And it is also seen that names of all the enzymes, it ends with ASE, ACE. So all the enzyme names end with ACE. Again, you take another example of an enzyme called oxidoreductase. So oxido reductase this is another enzyme so this also ends with is and can you guess its function oxido reduct that means oxidation reduction reduction so they, this type of enzyme what does it do if there are multiple substrates let us suppose the s1 is one substrate s2 is another substrate and then it gives some product so it will oxidize one substrate and it will reduce the other substrate. So this type of enzymes are called oxidoreductase. So they are named after the function which they perform. So that is why they are called oxidoreductase. So these are some of the logic which is which are used to name enzymes. Similarly, we have another enzymes called uh, uh, lactase because it acts on lactose. So that means we have lipases because they help in digestion of lipids. So they have been named as lipase. 
So this is how normally the trend is to name enzymes. So now the most important topic, how do enzymes work? What magic do they do that they can rate, increase the rate of the reaction and they themselves remain unaltered? So let us see how do enzymes work? Now before we actually understand the mechanism, we should be aware of some of the terminologies related to the enzymes action. The first one is a substrate. As I said, these are nothing but the reactants on which enzymes act. So they are substrate. Product. The result of the reaction. Whatever is formed as a result of the reaction, that is my product. So basically what is going to happen here, substrate is going to combine with the enzyme to give you the final product. So this is the final product which you are going to get. This is your reactant and enzyme is going to act upon this substrate to give you this product. So that is where the enzyme is going to play its role. Third is active site. As I said, the, when you look at the structure of an enzyme, it has an active site. It has a region which can combine with the substrate. So it is that region of the enzyme with a corresponding shape where the substrate can fit in. So basically here what will happen is the first step is that the substrate will fit in with the enzyme. Now how can you vis visualize this How about the active site concept? Let me give you a better example. Now this is also known as substrate binding site because this is the site or this is the region where the substrate binds with the enzyme. So just think of uh, this um, shapes which we often used to play when we were kids. So different shapes and we used to match them with some other shapes which will exactly fit in with each other. So if this is your enzyme and if this is your active site, what does it mean? It means that this site is in accordance with the shape of a substrate which can fit in. Let us suppose this is a substrate. So if you look at this, the shape of the substrate here is complementing the active site here. So this substrate can very well fit in with this enzyme. Correct? But this substrate cannot fit in with some other enzyme which doesn't have an active site for this particular substrate. So active site is nothing but a cluster of specific chemical groupings and only a specific substrate can fit into it. So as you can see here, only this can fit into it. You just cannot bring any other shape and try to fit it into the enzyme because this active site is specifically meant for a particular substrate. That is why it is said that enzymes are very very selective in nature because enzymes act only on specific reactants. So the, the way enzyme and the substrate combine together, this is very similar to lock and key, how lock and key complement each other. That is why this is also known as lock and key mechanism sometimes. So these are some of the basic concepts. Now you know what is substrate, what is product, what is active site, how a substrate combines with the active site. So please remember that it is not that any substrate can combine with any enzyme. So one enzyme is meant for a particular substrate and that is how the active site of the enzyme is designed. That only that substrate can come and join with it. So now we will try to understand the mechanism which is followed by enzyme that will increase the rate of the reaction and also the enzyme will remain the same. So let us look at the exact mechanism by which enzymes do their job. So quite a complex picture, right? But when you actually start understanding it, it is going to be very, very simple. Now this is your enzyme, the gray colored structure which you see, that is your enzyme. And this is your substrate, the green colored structure. And this is your active site. You see, it complements to the shape of the substrate so that the substrate can come and fit into the active site. So basically in the first step, what will happen? Let us suppose uh, this is your enzyme, this is your substrate. So the substrate will combine with the enzyme and they will form an enzyme substrate complex. So this is what is formed here, enzyme substrate complex, when the substrate joins with the enzyme. So this is the, so formation of this from this is the first step. After that what happens, 
This enzyme substrate complex gets converted into enzyme product complex. So how does this happen? This happens because once the substrate is connected with the enzyme, the enzyme attracts and distorts the substrates. That is some making and breaking of bonds take place. Now while these two, both of these are joined, some breaking and making of bonds will happen. So there will be some changes in the structure of this substrate. So the enzyme substrate complex will get converted into enzyme product complex. And then the products will be released from the enzymes. So what happened? You, we were able to produce products from the substrate. So here you can see the products are released. So we started with this as reactant and we ended up with these as products. But what happened to the enzyme? If you look at this, the enzyme was like this and the enzyme is still like that. So there is no change in the enzyme. But the enzyme facilitated the reaction. So it may, it helped the reaction to take place, but it did not change itself. So the enzymes remain same throughout the process. It is just that it by lowering the activation energy. So enzyme lowers the activation energy. So that ways it makes the reaction to happen a little more easier. So that ways enzymes act as biological catalyst. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.